Hi, Jim T. Wills here. And on this episode of the KLR650 Maintenance Series, I want to show you how to check the valve clearances on your KLR650. So stick around and we'll get started right after this. All right, so in this episode, we're going to check our valve clearances. Um, I also have a following video that's going to show you how to actually adjust the clearances. But in this episode, I, I had to break it into two pieces because they were fairly long videos. Um, so in this episode, we're just going to look at checking the valve clearances. Um, the service manual says that you should check your uh, valve clearances every 15,000 miles or 24,000 kilometers. Um, my bike at this point in time has uh, 19,800 miles on it and I'm not 100% sure whether the previous owner had checked the valve clearances or not. So assuming that they didn't, I'm overdue for a valve check here. Uh, one of the other reasons I really wanted to check this is I recently went on a long ride uh, to uh, the ADV Moto Rally in Romney, West Virginia. It's about 1,100 miles from me round trip. And I noticed uh, uh, a lot of, uh, not a lot, but I noticed some valve uh, clacking and uh, clicking. I could hear some rattling. Uh, the oil levels were fine, but on, it was pulling hills at high speeds. Um, and I would, I would hear, hear that noise. Um, so uh, when I got back, I decided it was time to check the valve clearances. So if you're gonna do this yourself, you should feel comfortable with at least partially tearing the engine apart. Uh, we are going to be taking the head cover off and getting into where the valves are. Um, if you are not comfortable in doing this, after watching this video, if, you, if it's not something you feel comfortable doing, I highly recommend that you don't try it. Take it to a shop uh, or a mechanic in your area who is, or somebody who's familiar with doing the work and, and, and letting them do it. If you are going to try this yourself, I do highly recommend that you get a good service manual for the KLR650. There are resources online. You can get PDF copies of service manuals. Um, I personally uh, bought the Climber uh, manual for the KLR650. I've had these manuals before in the past. Been very happy with them. A lot of good detail, good photos. So it's, it's well worth every penny to buy a service manual for your bike if you're gonna work on it. So as I mentioned before, uh, these videos are, uh, uh, this one and the valve adjustment videos fairly long. So uh, uh, stick with me. I know a lot of you guys have uh, written to me. You like the detail in these videos. Uh, there's other videos out there that show you how to do this. Uh, you can take a look at uh, all of them. I encourage you to watch others and see if you can get other information. I'm going to try to give you as much detail and uh, show you what to and what not to do uh, during this. So enough of my babbling. Uh, let's go ahead and get started and uh, check those valve clearances. So zoomed in here just to show you a close up of what I'm going to remove in order to get in here and take the uh, valve cover off of uh, the head. Uh, obviously there's the things in the center. Uh, you have this electrical wire which is your um, uh, coolant temperature sending unit. Uh, it's an electrical connection and that's what goes to your temperature gauge to tell you your coolant temperature. We'll need to remove the spark plug wire which is pretty simple. And then we got to remove this vacuum tube here or this vacuum line. Uh, the vacuum line goes in from the top of the head around and then down in here um, into this pump. So we'll disconnect here, um, pull this wire, we'll disconnect this clamp here and pull this hose off and then there's a, uh, a screw here and then of course there's a, a screw or a bolt head down in here that you'll be able to see that you just remove that. Uh, this sending wire just simply pulls off like this. We'll put that aside. Spark plug wire will pull off and you just pull that off to the side as well just to tuck it up out of the way somewhere so it's not there. So the goal here and then we'll also remove this this is the uh, uh, the air intake line here for your vacuum system so just for clarity I'll, I'll move this clamp and pull this out of the way just so you can get in here. Um, and then additionally this upper uh, motor mount that's here I'm going to remove these bolts and those plates take those out of the way because once I take these four uh, four bolts out here it's going to be a lot easier to get that head out or I'm sorry the valve cover out with that uh, motor mount out of the way. Alright so let's get started and, and pull this stuff out of the way. 
So just using a pair of pliers, we'll squeeze this clamp together. So that's just a rubber vacuum hose, and that can be tucked up out of the way. Apologize if I'm blocking the camera angle. It's a little hard to do this sometimes on camera. So let's get in here with some needle nose pliers, squeeze that clamp, bring it back onto the hose, and then we can work this vacuum line off of here. And there we go. So that's loose. You can see on this vacuum pipe, you got an eight millimeter bolt head here, and then this pipe makes a curve. You can't see for the tank puck, but it just makes a curve and goes down here, and there's another eight millimeter bolt in here. So let's just remove both of those and then let that pipe out of the way. Uh, now here in this close up, you can see the electrical connection for the temperature coolant sending gauge, and then you can see the top of the spark plug here, which we've already removed the plug wires. So to remove the um, bolt that's down inside the head, I'm just using a deep well 8 millimeter socket and a ratchet uh, with an extension that's too long because you've got to clear the frame here. And there it is. And you'll need to switch to a standard socket because to get to this one, uh, the frame is in the way. So now with a uh, uh, shorter eight millimeter socket. We're going to just take this off here. And there's that one. So just a little note of interest to not get these two confused. Uh, the one that came out of the head is this longer one. Uh, I'm move my hand here. So it's a little deeper than the, uh, eight, the smaller one that came out of the, the top of the valve cover. So just remember that when you're putting those back. Alright, so next we should be able to lift just very gently. It doesn't take a lot of pressure. Let's remove this vacuum tube, and it just has a bit of a, a recess or a lip that goes down inside the uh, valve cover. So let's set that aside. The next step is going to be to remove this uh, upper motor mount here before we go in here and start taking these, uh, these bolts out. All right, so to get in here, uh, these are 12 millimeter uh, bolt heads, and as you can see, uh, the throttle cables that come down, these two throttle cables, uh, for the carburetor and this uh, vacuum line here uh, are kind of in the way so you might need to kind of push those over out of the way there's one on the bottom two on the top and then I'll need of course uh, to hold them from the back side because there are nuts on these on the back side of these bolts so let's get in here to remove this first one there's the nut from the back side And the bolt. I'm just going to put the nut back on there just so that I don't lose that. And again, just lift these lines up out of the way here a little bit. And there is the nut there. And then lastly, there's uh, one more on the bottom, one bolt on the bottom. Now it's not really threaded into a nut, it's got kind of a little capture plate on the backhand side. And let's go ahead and just remove that. And I'll show you what that looks like when I get it off there. But it's in a place such that you could not get a, a wrench in there hardly. It would be very difficult. So you see one side of the motor mount plate. Thing here. There's the capture plate that's on the back side for the nut or for the bolt to screw into and then the other <laughs> I did drop it anyway uh, and the motor mount plate off the other side. So we're just going to set all these parts aside here. So now with the motor mount out of the way and everything else, uh, the next step is going to be to remove these four head bolts here. All right, so with everything else out of the way, uh, the motor mount and all of the lines, uh, what I'm going to do now is to remove these four uh, valve cover bolts. So these are 12 millimeter bolts. When you go to remove them, make sure you keep 
straight because the bolts on this side of the head and the bolts on that side of the head, the left and right side are different as far as the size or the length of them. So we want to make sure that we remember which one came out of which side. So with the 12 millimeter socket, I'm going to go ahead and remove this side here. And I'm just going to break them loose. And break loose the left side. So getting in here to this left back, uh, left rear bolt uh, may be a little difficult. So what I'm going to do is get it, use a uh, ratcheting uh, wrench to get in here and it makes that a little easier. There's not a whole lot of room to get in there with the socket. So I've got them all broken loose. I'm going to go ahead and remove them. So as these come out, there is a, uh, a rubber type of grommet in top of the head here that will uh, come out with it, or it may not. If it doesn't, it's okay to leave it in there. But I like to go ahead and remove it, uh, and then so I can wipe it down clean. But that gives you an idea of what the uh, valve cover bolts look like. Quite different than other bolts. So I'm just going to use a rag here and wipe this guy up. There's some oil on it, which is normal. And then we'll set it aside. Here's the other one from the front side. And I'm placing them in order uh, that they were removed so I know exactly where they came from. I'm doing most of this work from the right hand side of the bike uh, just because I already have the camera set up over here but obviously you could, it might be easier for you to go around if you're just doing the job yourself to the other side of the bike and, and get these out of here. So you can see there is a difference. That's what the bolts look like that come out of the right hand side. I'm sorry, the left hand side uh, where the, uh, the timing chain is. And there's the left rear bolt. Okay, on the left hand side of the bike, the one thing that we need to do is to remove the fan off of the radiator. Um, some people do, some people don't, but it does make it easier if you just want to remove one plug and these four screws in order to take this fan off. Uh, because when you go to lift this valve cover off, it's a lot easier to come out this side because of the shape and size of it. Uh, and the front will want to hit this fan, and if you don't want to bend everything out of the way, it's just a little easier. It's up to you whether you want to actually remove that or not, but I'm going to show you how, just in case you do. So, to remove this, you can use a Phillips screwdriver or a 10 millimeter socket. I recommend using a 10 millimeter socket. It's a lot easier, and if those bolts are kind of nasty and credit in there, it's a lot easier without reaming out the uh, Phillips head on that. Uh, it's a captured nut system here on the radiator. So as you can see, it's a caged nut, a captured nut uh, on this. So if you uh, want to save those and just put the put the nut back in there, or the bolt back in there. You can leave the cage nut on the radiator if you like, but they're kind of loose and they tend to want to fall off, so I just like to go ahead and remove it. Correction, I had said that there was four of these. There's actually three, um, so we just want to correct that. So with those three, two on the left, one on the right. The fan is free at this point. Now there's a couple little metal uh, tabs or, that you can bend out. They're very uh, light and that just gets it out. Those retain the wires out of the way. Uh, now the next point is to remove this upper electrical connection here. Squeeze in those tabs and just unplug it like so. And at that point the uh, radiator fan or the cooling fan is, is clear. To come out. Now that we have everything out of the way, there's still it's very a tight, it's still a very tight fit to get this valve cover out of here. So one thing I like to do is to pull this uh, uh, tank rubber puck uh, for the mounting the fuel tank on. Go ahead and twist it and, and pull it off. Uh, gets it out of the way, gives you a little more clearance. And then you're going to have to get in here and really hold these wires now uh, and lines up out of the way because you want as much clearance as possible to get the valve cover up to the frame and kind of bring it out. 
Uh, and it can be a bit of a pain, but just be careful and try not to pry. Just gently wiggle it around and there we go. So now we have the valve cover off. And again, be careful with this rubber gasket. You don't want to rip or tear it, obviously. If you do, you'll need to replace it. I'm working in kind of a tight space here. I don't know if I can get all this on camera or not, but uh, the next thing that we want to do is before we actually put our feeler gauges under the cam lobes uh, to measure our clearances, is that we want to get our, um, our timing, our pistons, everything to top dead center. So in order to do that, there's these two inspection plates or cover plates here that are plastic uh, that are on the left hand side of the engine. Uh, so you want to use as big a screwdriver as you can. I mean, by that I mean wider to get in here uh, to open these inspection plates or covers. So let's remove that. And that's going to expose a 19 millimeter bolt in here and I'll, I'll try to get you a closer shot on that one. And this cover here is going to allow you to see your top dead center markings. So through the little window there's going to be a T marking and first of all, when you rotate the crank, you only want to do it counterclockwise. Okay, you don't want to go back clockwise. Okay, uh, so let's rotate the engine around and you'll see the timing marks move. Uh, up top here, you'll see the actual cams move due to the timing chain connected down here to the crank. And what we want to do is we want to crank it around and there's some little arrows here. Now zoomed in here, you'll see there's two indicators on the, uh, on the cams. Uh, there's a, these little arrows here, and they're going to line up. This is part of the timing, but there's also on the other end, there is just a straight line. So what we really want to do is to kind of bring this around. I want to be careful because the engine will turn over. Now this is highlighted with white here, uh, this other arrow. So we want to bring it around to where essentially they're flush with the top of the casing, like so. So you'll see the tail of the arrow, the arrow head will be pointing this way. Of course, this cover is blocking part of that. And here's the other one. Uh, so in that case, if we look down below, uh, you'll see the T here, and I'll show you a photo of what that looks like through this inspection port here, um, uh, where we are at top dead center. Uh, also, you can tell because the uh, cranks, uh, I'm sorry, the camshafts are aligned with the tails of the arrows pointing toward the rear of the bike. The head of the arrow is pointing toward the front. And again, that's indicated here and here, and I'll show you a close-up shot uh, in here right now. So once that is in that position, we can take our feeler gauges and check underneath the lobes to see about the spacing. All right, so now that we have the valve cover off, we can get in here to where the, uh, uh, the cam lobes and the valve shims are located. So uh, on uh, the, um, this is the front of the engine and this is the back of the engine or the rear of the bike. So you'll see you have two cams. One is for intake and one is for exhaust. And you can tell that by looking on top of the uh, covers here. Uh, the um, one says in and it's pointing toward the front and on both sides. Uh, up here you'll see it says exhaust or EX for exhaust and pointing toward the front. So, uh, and, th and that makes sense when you're looking at the bike because your carburetor is back here. That's pulling your fuel air mixture into the bike. And of course, the, uh, uh, the intake cams or intake valves open and uh, allow the fuel air mixture into the bike. Of course, they close, then the compression stroke happens and spark happens and causes the, um, uh, the combustion but drives your piston back down. And then of course the, uh, the next cycle or the next stroke, cause that's where the four strokes come from. The next stroke is uh, to open uh, these lobes cycle around and open the exhaust valves. And then the piston comes up and pushes uh, the exhaust out of the engine. And then it just starts all over again. So you got your intake combustion and exhaust is how that happens. All right, so enough about that. Okay, so I've got my feeler gauges uh, ready here. I can get to where the light, you can see it. Uh, on each feeler gauge, it's marked. These are kind of just a generic universal uh, kind of feeler gauges. They have both SAE and metrics. So the top number is uh, inches, bottom number is millimeters. Uh, and I have, uh, so 0 0.004 inches equals 0 0.102 uh, millimeters, all the way up to my 0.2 uh, millimeters. So for my intake, my climber's manual indicates that the minimum uh, clearance should be point 
100, which so I'll use this feeler gauge for that. And then my maximum clearance should be 0 0.200. So 0 0.203 is close enough. If I'm within three, I guess it's three thousandths, uh, we should be okay. And then I have the gauges in between to try to identify what my clearance would uh, would be. So, okay, so I'm gonna start with the intake back here. And first of all, let's start with our minimum. And I just wanna see if the lobe on the uh, camshaft you want to slide it between the lobe and the uh, shim, which is this disc right underneath there. Uh, so let's try that. And of course, the 0 0.102 uh, slides uh, through there without any any issues. You can see that. So let's uh, go up to our maximum, which is 0.2. Try that. And that is not going in there. So, uh, so right off the bat, we're within tolerances, but uh, where are we within tolerances? Uh, so let's uh, go ahead and step up one. So I'm going to try my 0.127 millimeter and see if that'll slide. And it does, yes it does, but it's barely, so it's tight there. So that lets me know I'm right about 1.127. So I'm near the bottom end of the, uh, of the uh, range on this. So that means this valve is starting to get a little tight. It's not out of tolerances yet but it's, it's getting down there. Uh, so I may consider changing the shim on this one just to give me a little more, a little more room uh, in there. So let's move over to the, uh, the left side of the bike over here to this cam, uh, to this lobe uh, and that valve. And you gotta move things out of the way to get in here. And okay, so that slides in another nice and easy. So let's step up one like we did before to uh, point one. Two seven, and, and you want to be careful with these feeler gauges and make sure you don't have two stuck together because sometimes that'll happen, so you want to be careful. Um, so let's make sure that we only have the one feeler gauge. So now I'm stepping up to my 1.27, which is really where this other valve kind of topped out. And that is tight. I can't even get the 0.127 in there and kind of bend in my uh, feeler gauge a little bit. So it, it did not slide in there. So that means it is down between uh, 0.127 so that left valve is even tighter than this right intake valve so that one is getting really close to the uh, to the tolerances all right so I think what I'm gonna do all right well first of all let's, let's go ahead and, and now let's uh, check the uh, gap on our, um, uh, our clearances on our exhaust valves so uh, here's a shot of the, uh, the service manual and here it shows that our exhaust clearance should be between uh, 0.15 millimeters and 0.25 uh, millimeters. So let's step up uh, on our uh, feeler gauges here. 0.15 is going to be the minimum uh, that it should be. Uh, and let's try that. And that will not... There we go. Close, but it's, it's really tight. So 0.152, it is right at the, uh, at the bottom of that clearance. Um, so let's step over to our left side and no, that's just way too tight. It's not, uh, one five is not going in there. It did on this one, but it did not on that left valve. So what we can do is step down. Engage my fingers are oily. It's hard. So what I'm going to do is, so one five two was, uh, barely went into this one so that's really kind of the minimum so this one is at the absolute minimum clearance uh, uh, value but this left valve is tighter than that so 152 is not going to work there so let's go over here and try 127 and even 127 will not go under that left front uh, exhaust valve so I'm going to step down to um, 0.102 and see and that one does go under there so it's it's about it's again it's between 0.1 and 0.12 uh, on the clearance on that left front exhaust valve so the left front exhaust valve is outside of its uh, clearance so this one over here is, is too tight it is uh, outside and you know I've been when I'm riding in a high torque situation or like if I'm on the highway and kind of winding it up and climbing a hill um, you know Kind of at the top end of the KLR's range anyway, but uh, I've been hearing some valves rattling uh, and uh, or some clacking coming from the valves, and that's why I'm I'm checking this. 
So clearly I need to do some shims uh, here, some shim replacement. So I'm out of tolerances on this left front exhaust valve. I'm at the very minimum tolerance of 150 on this right front exhaust valve. And I'm within tolerances on these two, but they are, again, getting very close on the intake side of things. So uh, next I'm going to sit down and take a look at uh, what shims I need to order because I'm not going to order a kit of shims. You know, that's 50, 60 bucks for a whole kit. You can do that if you want. That way you have a bunch of different shims. Um, I'm going to order specifically the shims that I need and save a little money uh, by about six, seven dollars a piece uh, instead of paying 50 or 60. Uh, so, uh, so that's what we're going to do. So we're going to decide which, uh, which shims uh, we need for our bike. Okay, so as you can see, checking the valve clearances is, is not too difficult of a job. Okay, now, uh, as you could see, some of my valve clearances were out and I need to adjust them. I'm actually going to adjust all four valves and that's going to be in the next video. So you look for this very next video, which I'm publishing at the same time as this one, which will show you how to actually get in there, take the valve cams out and uh, pull the shims out and replace them with the proper size. In that video, I'll get into how you calculate those, etc. So, if you want to see how to actually adjust the valve shims, then watch the very next video. Here's a link that'll take you right to it. All right. So, as always, this is Tim Two Wheels. That's how I did it. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.